especially if I'd have had my skinny tires on, Lord, that that, that rogator would have been buried to the frame. But. Good morning guys, it is May the 13th and on my way into work, uh, I pulled in here, I'm at Lounsboro and uh, this is where we're going to plant soybeans and this is probably the driest field we got after that last rain so I'm out here just checking to see how wet it is. It's a little on the damp side but I think if that sun comes out today uh, we'll be planting at lunch. Uh, this field's pretty dry. It's got some wet spots down in the bottoms, but for the most part, it's it's a sandier soil. Uh, the main thing that bothers me, as you can see, we have not burned it down, but what bothers me about that is this. Mare's tail. And uh, it's getting pretty big. And sometimes we're starting to get into some situations where we've found out that we have some roundup resistant mare's tail and uh with this being so big i mean look at this one right here it's almost at my waist it is at my waist probably gonna have to put some other kind of chemical in there in my tank to uh go after this baby right here but the rest of the stuff uh, i'm not worried about it what we're putting in there will kill all that but uh, we will have to add something different. I don't know what it is. I'll have to call, um, find out what we need to put in there. But that that could be a problem if we don't get it killed. So I'm gonna go up here and look at the corn while I'm here. It's right over there. And uh, then we'll head to the shop and we'll start regrouping with everybody and uh, get everything moved up here basically. And uh, hopefully we'll be planting by lunchtime. Boy, that wind is blowing. Wow, this corn is growing fast. Man, oh man. Another thing we got to do this corn is I've got to lay it by. When I say lay it by, that means that's the last shot of herbicides uh, that we're going to put on it. And it's getting to that point because if you let the corn get too big, See right here, this morning glory, that vine right there. Well, if you come in here with the sprayer and it runs over it right now and it's trying to spray right down, well, all these leaves and the canopy of the corn is gonna shield that morning glory. So that's one reason you can't let corn get too big before you lay it by because you're gonna miss a lot of grass and weeds and vines, morning glories and stuff. That's right on the road because the corn leaves are gonna shield all that spray from getting to the ground and making good contact. So uh, we're getting to that stage where we, we need to be laying by pretty daggum quick. Uh, this variety, if y'all are wondering, is local seed 1987. And in this particular part of the field, it had the Invigor 8 seed treatment uh, put on it and um, looks really 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 good and I think it's gonna be a good variety all right moving on
Uh, we got a game plan now. I think I'm on do start doing the spraying in front of the soybean planters. Uh, what Josh was doing, we're gonna leave him over here in the valley to finish up uh, what he's got left to do. So I'm gonna be putting out strut, which is a uh, generic dicamba. We're planting dicamba beans. So strut tombstone is gonna be for the grasshoppers up there at Lounsboro where all those weeds are. I know there's grasshoppers in there. The Zidua SC, that is for the grass. Then, uh, of course, I'm putting out the Roundup Power Max. Three, uh, two. So that's my recipe. Just got it loaded. Uh, Dad and them are getting their planter ready to go, filling up with diesel, water, everything. And we are about to have a convoy to Lounsboro. So the day is getting started. And of course, the last pallet I had to move is when the forklift ran out of propane and Mark's filling it up. Y'all filling up water? I don't know if he put his chemical in or not, but he said he, he wanted to. Yeah, what does that look like? Twisted tank? Huh? <laughs> we just eyeball it. We'll call it 75. Close enough. All right, we need more seed in the tender. That's what PA says, so I'm gonna go load it up. Is local C4795 soybeans. I hope these are not returnable bags. <laughs> Josh is back. He got my water tank. We're gonna fill it up with water. He's already taken my fertilizer up there. So we're gonna top this off with some clean water and get it up there. My combine's getting lonely, sitting over here. It's okay. You only got two more weeks and then we'll be cutting wheat. For those who are new to the channel, um, earlier this spring, we had two CP690 John Deere round bell cotton pickers and we traded one of them in because we were gonna have a lot of beans and corn this year. And uh, anyway, we bought another 8250 brand new um, they hadn't even made it yet uh, case combine and we also got a 45 foot brand new draper header to go with it and they're supposed to start building it in August and they said it would be delivered here September 1st so that'll be an exciting day to get that on the farm and uh, get back to running two case combines again like we used to but that's coming in the future 
and uh, hopefully with all this COVID and backups and shipping and there's no delays because we're going to need that thing September 1st for sure so we can start cutting beans with it but that's all coming in the works if you didn't know all right part of the convoy is already on the road and the rest of it is fixing to get on the road now dad's planner pa's planner and got everybody bringing the tenders fertilizer trailers water trailers we are all getting on the road so hopefully we'll have a safe trip everybody made it to Lounsboro. dad's planning pa's planning and um i'm spraying and uh it ends up it is a little on the wet side you can see my ruts right here uh it's uh probably had a seven tenths rain out here and then we had some cool nights the last two nights it hasn't dried up and uh we pair till this land and that is makes it really really soft underneath there and uh where you where you have some of these wetter spots um there's just no way around it if you go through it you are going to sink down and uh that's not bad that is bad that is what happens when you get in that paratail groove you cannot get out of it. i don't know how i didn't get stuck um but i didn't but i was literally you could not i could not turn it's just stuck in that paratail groove and uh it barely came out of there but boy i really rutted up the field here's an example of how deep the ruts are So that's that's above my knee and uh, if you'll look at the ground up under here if I'd have sunk down any more especially if I'd have had my skinny tires on Lord that that, that rogator would have been buried to the frame but I won't be coming back through this area because I got to do two passes. Um, putting out the herbicides now, and some people may say, "Well, why don't you combine the herbicide and the fertilizer?" And second trip be the fertilizer. I don't know. When I have weeds this bad out here, um, whenever I try to combine the fertilizer and the herbicides, it just never works good. So I'm putting the herbicide out now. So when I come back and do the fertilizer, I'll just leave this off right here. Uh, it's just. If I come back through here again, even if I came came over a little bit and tried to not hit my same ruts, anyway, it's a it's too risky. I mean, I may bury that machine, and we don't want to be burying it today. Well, I finished putting out the uh, herbicide. 300 acres now swapped over uh, to the Amtho fertilizer, and uh, I have to go back over it again. Uh, Dad and them. Well, Dad's right here. He's just filling up. Uh, they're putting out in furrow. I don't know if I told. Maybe I told it on a video. But they're putting out um, Rhizonate Genesis Egg. Anyway, that's going out in furrow. And also, we are putting in um, this Feraline. putting out that's basically powdered iron putting out a uh, half a pound to the acre uh, all that's going in furrow right down there with soybean seed these are those uh precision planting clean sweep uh, little air cylinders basically what that does is he can control it in the cab he can lift these martin till um scratchers we call them he can lift them up out of the way if it goes through a mud, muddy spot or something because if this goes through any mud man it 
it just gums up the whole planter. So uh, he loved them. Uh, we only have them on one planter because we kind of wanted to buy it because it's pretty expensive uh, to put on. We put all brand new Martin Kill stuff on too. But um, we want to try it on one planter, and if we liked it, then we would buy it for the next one the next year. But he loved it. Pretty nifty little deal, and it works good. He hasn't had any problems out of that. I got the drone with me today. Beautiful day today. About 70 degrees. Sun's out. A few clouds. Beautiful weather. So let's, uh, let's throw the drone up. Guys, that's going to be it for the video. Uh, I'm about to get another fill up. And uh, that'll last the rest of the day. But um, had a great day. The ground conditions, the soil is getting better and better with this sunshine. Uh, it was a little on the wet side when we got started. But um, it's going to get better and better. I think we'll get the whole place planted. Uh, Dad and PA are running over there. And like I said, I'm going to get another load. So... Uh, Thanks for watching. If you don't mind, give me a thumbs up. Just hit that little thumb. That means you like the video. And uh, thank you guys for watching our channel. It really means a lot. But uh, we'll see you on the next one, guys.